Welcome back everybody. Today we're doing another one of those videos that we don't want to do. It's another video where things are happening politically uh, that are going to negatively impact millions of you, unfortunately. Uh, but looking around in the media landscape from what I've seen in local news, national news, I have not seen what's actually going to happen be covered. Um, so I want to go into that so that way folks who watch my channel and their friends and their network can be as prepared as possible to what I think is going to happen uh, and the timeline that I think it's going to happen in. So uh, basically on my B channel and then on my Rumble channel a couple weeks ago, I did a video about Washington uh, House Bill 1240. Basically that bill passed, went to the Senate, and then as of Saturday night, as when I'm recording this, it is Monday. Uh, so as of Saturday night, it passed the Senate. Please bear with the construction noise if you hear it. Um, but as of Saturday night, it passed the Senate with some revisions, so it has to go back to the House. Once that happens, it will go to the governor's office for signature. Now the legislative session in Washington State ends on April 23rd, so that will give you somewhat of a timeline as to what is happening. But this is quite literally the most restrictive assault weapons based which of course that's not at all what it is uh, that I have seen uh, possibly ever uh, it's really bad like it makes California and New York look permissive um, we'll try to get into why that is and just walk through it point by point here to keep the video as short as possible but still informing you as well as possible so uh, there will be a link to this uh, actual bill so you guys can read it yourself it's not long it's like 14 pages and also links to contact your representative and the governor in Washington State now, what does it actually do? Number one, it bans 65 weapons specifically, but that's actually not true. So in the legislation, legislation rather, it lists out 65 different items that I should be rolling in here in your screen. But as you'll see, a lot of them are broad categories, so it's simply not true. For example, they categorize AK-47s, AK-74s, AR-15s, M4s, uh, FN SCARs, etc. Weapons that have a lot of subcategories to them. Um, and really, there's a ton of different SKUs underneath. They list them all as prohibited items. Now, I should also back up and say that uh, as of right now, the way it's written out of this Senate bill, which very likely will be very, very, if not exactly how it will come out of the House because they're trying to push it for the end of the legislative session that I just talked about. As it's written right now, um, there is a provision so that way folks who currently own their items before the bill is signed into law can keep them. However, you will not be able to buy them, transfer them, anything like that, inherit them uh, if this actually goes into effect, which it very likely will. Again, I'm not going to sugarcoat things for you and, and say that it's not going to happen. It very, very likely will happen. Um, so those are the prohibited items. But again, keep in mind, a ton of those rifles that are named have subcategories. So it's not 65 rifles like they're saying. It's, it's literally thousands of different rifles that are explicitly banned by name as quote unquote assault rifles. But it's not just those rifles. They actually go into kits and parts. So let's knock that out next. Directly from the bill, a conversion kit part or combination of parts from which an assault weapon can be assembled or from which a firearm can be converted into an assault weapon if those parts are in the possession or under the control of the same person. So what they're getting at there is exactly what it sounds like, parts. So we'll use the AR-15 as an example. Uh, so if you have an AR-15 stock, an AR-15 grip, an AR-15 handguard, an AR-15 light, a uh, threaded barrel, for an AR-15, those things are prohibited from purchase once this goes into effect. I realize that sounds insane, but you can look into the actual bill and they actually expound upon that and go into detail on it. So trust me, after this thing goes into law, if it is in the configuration this bill is in right now, those things will be prohibited from being sold in the state of Washington to all law-abiding citizens. Next up, they do limit the size of a rifle. Now this becomes extremely important when you consider what's going on at the federal level. So in the actual bill, just to quote it real quick, a semi-automatic rifle that has an overall length of less than 30 inches is prohibited once this goes into effect. Now, that ties in with what the ATF is trying to do currently where they're trying to ban braces. And they're saying that if you have a pistol with a brace on it, which has been legal for over 10 years in America, the ATF has said that uh, you know, the, all types of federal agencies have said it's perfectly legal. Now they're saying it's not. Well, if you live in Washington state, you don't have the option once this goes into effect to register that as a short barrel rifle because it will be expressly prohibited under this law. Now, 
For those of you who aren't gun people, I realize that might be a little bit confusing, but see my earlier videos on the braces and what they're trying to do. Trust me, this is a huge number of firearms that are that is in the state of Washington that will fall under this if folks have not filed the paperwork with the ATF to make it a short barrel rifle prior to this going into effect it will be a prohibited weapon no matter what there will be no grandfather clause for this particular one once this goes into effect if that's not done again I do not believe the ATF has the ability to declare a brace a stock but again when you combine the two pieces of both the ATF's opinion letter with this that is a very very dangerous combination for tyranny in the state of Washington so pay attention to that that is not a small sentence in this 14 page bill as noted earlier, they have a list of what is actually prohibited by name, but it goes into even more detail in this paragraph here, which will cover basically everything with the exception of lever actions, bolt actions, and pump actions. And it goes, to set, goes on to say, a semi-automatic centerfire rifle that has the capacity to accept a detachable magazine and has one or more of the following. And then it just goes through a whole list. You guys can see them here, but essentially it is every single semi-automatic centerfire rifle on the market if it's not listed in those earlier ones that we rolled in here on the screen it's still banned after this goes into effect we touched on parts a little bit earlier but i do want to go into more detail because it's more expansive than what i even touched on because certain things that all of us think are completely normal are expressly banned once this goes into effect another good example would be a muzzle brake a recoil compensator a flash hider uh, basically anything that can be threaded onto a rifle will be banned in this additionally uh, shrouds that go around barrels now in this reading this it's not clear if that impacts shotguns which we'll get into here in just a second for the shroud because a lot of shotguns have heat shields on them which is a shroud according to this bill as you would expect with any assault weapons bill, the status that wrote this are also coming after magazines. So any magazine that holds greater than 10 rounds will be prohibited for sale transfer in the state of Washington after this goes into effect. Now, I should clarify that the Senate bill did put in a clause, an amendment that allows for people to travel between states. So if you go between Oregon, let's say in Washington state and you have a magazine that has a date code on it, before the date that this goes into law, theoretically, you're supposed to be grandfathered in. Now, again, a lot of magazines do not have date codes on it. How would they know that? If it was you know, acquired before or after? I don't know, that's up for you and your local Soros appointed DA to go over. You guys can deal with that. I'm just telling you that is what it says in the law. So if you already have the magazines, you're good, uh, but you will not be able to procure them after the date that this goes into effect. The same is true for pistols. Pistols and rifles are the same in that regard. 10 rounds or more, banned. Now for shotguns, if it has a tubular magazine, i.e. like a Benelli M4 or a Mossberg 870 or whatever the case may be, it can only hold seven rounds. So if you have a magazine extension that allows your, your tubular magazine to hold eight rounds, which a ton of pump action shotguns do, that is now an assault weapon under this bill and will be prohibited. You will not be able to acquire it once this goes into law. If you thought that was enough restrictions on shotguns, well, they got more for you. If you have a retractable stock on a shotgun, it is banned. So let's say for instance, that you're someone like myself and my wife, I'm six feet tall, relatively healthy male, and my wife is tiny. So if we wanted to have a shotgun for home defense that she was able to collapse the stock on and have a little bit more comfortable firing uh, stance with it, and I would be able to extend it a little bit longer because I'm a taller, larger person, well, that would be banned. Uh, why? Who knows, because the status say so. Additionally, you cannot put a foregrip on a shotgun. I know a lot of folks out there, particularly guys who are into competitions, have uh, indexing points, whether it be a foregrip or a hand stop or something like that on their shotguns, that is banned. Those are also banned on rifles. So all of that is banned. So parts and then even modifying rifles that are technically allowed under the current ban with certain parts, that's still banned. So even though you thought you were good, well, it's banned anyway, now you're committing a crime. Now I should note that this, as of right now, the first charge is not a felony. However, it is the most serious charge of misdemeanor with a fine of thousands of dollars and up to 364 days in jail. Again, if you live in Washington state, you very likely have a Soros appointed DA. So very likely it's not gonna go well for you if you should find yourself in court. Now, what can we actually do about that? Of course, again, there's more in this bill that is horrible. However, what can you do in the interim? Well, right now, uh, if you live in Washington State, a lot of types of firearms 
already have a 10 day waiting period, but not all do. I should add, once this goes into effect, all firearms will have a 10 day waiting period, even a Ruger 1022 rimfire rifle. Um, but as of right now, there's not a 10 day waiting period for everything. Certain things like AR-15 lowers, for example, you can purchase there uh, and get them transferred, take them home the same day. Additionally, all of the parts, as of right now, you can purchase them in a lot of retailers. Uh, if you guys are watching this not on YouTube, I will link to the ones that are doing so down below in the video description. A lot of retailers are offering priority shipping for magazines, parts, uh, receivers, etc. for those of you who are in Washington State. Additionally, as of right now, when I'm filming this, it is the 10th. So what people who are in the know, attorneys in Washington State are saying is that they expect this to hit the governor's desk somewhere around the 17th or 18th. That way it's getting out of the house, you know, before the end of the legislative session. And it should or could rather go into effect immediately. So my point is, if you are in Washington and you want guns, you want guns that will be prohibited after this, I personally would order them now. Yes. Is Bruin on our side? Yes. Is the Supreme Court on our side? Yes. Do you want to wait the year, two, three, four potential years to get the item that you might want? If I lived in Washington State and I couldn't move, I wouldn't. That's me personally. Obviously, I don't live there. But if I did, that's what I would do. Additionally, if I had friends in Washington State, I would want them to know this information so that way they can plan accordingly. That is why I'm making this video. Typically, I want to bring you guys good news and say that these things can be stopped. I don't really think that's the case here. Again, I'm not going to lie to you guys. Um, of course, links to contact all these people are down below, but the odds of swaying the house to stop this are very, very low. And of course, your governor is a statist thug. Speaking of statist thugs, this bill also has a provision in it that exempts law enforcement from all of this. So while you, the lowly citizen who's trying to protect your family in the best way that you see possible, you know, are limited to 10 round magazines, no flash hider because who, why would you want to preserve your hearing in any way that you can? Of course, we can't have any of that. The police will be able to have silencers. And of course, silencers are prohibited for, for lowly serfs after this, but the police will be able to have them, have all of the kit, of course, select fire weapons as well under this law. But you, the average American citizen who has a natural right to defend yourself how you see fit will be prohibited from doing so in this bill. It's absolutely, like I said, it is, the worst, if, or among the worst, if not the worst, assault weapons ban I've ever seen. The restrictions on parts are insane. Additionally, one last issue to cover before we close the video out is that pistols with threaded barrels will be prohibited. So if you want to purchase like an FN 45 after this with a threaded barrel, uh, you will not be allowed to. Again, it has to do with the ability to add a flash hider, a suppressor, etc. Looking at the bill, it's a gray area as to whether or not you're actually going to be able to pick up handguns that are optics cut that I don't know. But again, the parts issue comes into this as well. So if you wanted to get, say, like an optics cut slide, can you do it? I don't know. Again, I read it twice. It's a gray area for that because of the accessor accessories clauses that are in here. But unfortunately, guys, that's all I have for you. I hate bringing you these bad news videos, but it's better than not knowing it and being blindsided by it. At least you can plan accordingly. So with that, if you guys aren't following me on all of my social medias, again, I've posted about this over the last few months, many, many times with updates. But again, it's getting down to the last minute here, unfortunately. I recommend you follow me on all my social medias particularly the non-Zuckerberg ones, if you can. Additionally, if you like this type of video and you're not you know, seeing two to four videos a week here on the channel and you're subscribed, if you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. But if you're not seeing two to four videos, sign up for the email list at the website here on your screen. If you guys want deals on all of this stuff, optics, ammunition, firearms, accessories, etc. Uh, sign up for my daily deals email at the website here on your screen. The, the email goes out every day as the name indicates, and it has six, seven, eight of the best deals that I find around the internet. It also has a meme. Maybe we'll have some good Washington related ones in the next few weeks. Uh, it should make you laugh in these uh, very serious times, unfortunately. So that's it, guys. Thank you all for watching. Again, if you know anybody in Washington, share this video with them. This is not being covered in the mainstream media at all. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you in the next video.